Why am I seeing the trailer again? Are you guys hearing the trailer? No, I'm going to stop that. Say I should be. Yeah, there I am. I'm streaming now. Yeah. God. No, I didn't get tangled in the verbiage. I was doing show prep. I was preparing a blur for a screen that I want to show you. Then I got it just right, had some troubles with it. And I said, all right, how close is it to show time? And I looked over and it says nine o'clock. And then I realized I didn't have this on yet, the headset. When I turn the headset on, it messes up with my camera settings. So I had to manually fix the settings. Oh, first world problems, right? Let's see. Oh, last time on the Windows Daily. Uh, I'm just kind of glancing through chat, and I'm going to turn towards the subjects that I have lined up for today and see if I can do this right. Good morning. It's August 9th, 2023, 9.03 a.m. by the time I got around to saying good morning. And I have three emails set up to respond to. One is from Sin. This one is from Amazon, and then this one is from Tim Sowell. Sin in the just in the subject line says, I need to learn from you. And I mentioned the other day that sometimes I don't see the subject line when I click into the email. This time I am. It's a little confusing. I haven't paid much attention to figure out when that is. <clears throat> Sin says, well, let's call him Wade, shall we? That's his name is Wade. So I had an incident of Windows 10. The, the only thing I could do was go into BIOS and my moot, my boot drive changed to a Sabrent NVMe. It was supposed to boot to Samsung 980. And I tried at least six times to and even plugged in a USB with Windows 10 Pro and set that as the boot drive. Didn't work until I plugged the USB into a red slot. I think it's 3.1 and it worked and I was and I was afterward there was two audio glitches in and then started working great. I'm so nervous to go into BIOS anymore. I have no idea what my settings are anymore. So if you're inclined, I'd like to peruse through BIOS and show me what my what may be any preferred settings or setup setups in BIOS. So I have a, this triggers a few things for me to respond to. Let's start with uh, here. I'm deducing that what happened is your Windows 10 was failing to boot. So you went into BIOS and you saw that your drives were listed in such a way in the boot order that it looked to you like it was trying to boot to the wrong drive. Now that wrong drive may have had a bootable uh, installation of Windows, and therefore it was booting to that. I'm deducing that was going on. So what I want to point out is that in BIOS, that is not the right place to control what drive your computer is going to boot on. Um, I'm going to bring up this Dell 7010 computer over here. I've already got it in BIOS. Now your BIOS screen is going to look different from one uh, one manufacturer of BIOS to another, and you're going to see this blinking. This once in a while, the screen's going to blink off, and that's the capture device. I can't do anything about it in BIOS. When I'm in Windows, I can connect a ex external monitor, and it seems to fix it. But here we see boot sequences. Windows Boot Manager, UEFI, NVMe. Now this uh, computer doesn't have a second drive, but what I think he's referring to is changing the order that the computer is going to look for a bootable device. That's not really where you should control which drive your computer is going to boot to. Now, to show where you ought to do that, let's do that on Big B, shall we? Uh, I'm going to press Windows key R, find the correct keyboard, Doug, and type msconfig and press Enter. And then on this boot tab is where if you have more than one drive that has a bootable Windows 10 image or any operating system, it'll show up in here. And you want to pick your default drive a boot device from here. Doesn't matter what order it shows up here in. You just click on it and then click set as default. And I suspect what was happening for Wade is that 
his normal Windows 10 boot device became damaged. So it was failing to boot. So even though it was probably set as the default device already, the computer was booting on the other bootable Windows device because that was the only thing available. So the correct thing to do, I'm suspecting, is that you needed to fix or repair the damage to the drive that you wanted to be able to boot from. Now, in order to do that, best way, best thing for you to do is physically disconnect the other drive that the computer is incorrectly booting to. And that way you're going to get forced into the Windows repair um, um, screen on boot up so that Windows can try to do an automatic repair. If the automatic repair doesn't work, then we got to go look for manual repair methods. Now, I'm kind of deducing that I think that's what you really needed to do because I don't quite have enough information here and I would need to ask you some questions or get some clarifications. But I, when I give that description and then go back and read this, let's see what you what you think about this. I had an incident of Windows 10. The only thing I could do was go into BIOS and my boot drive had changed to a Sabrent NVMe. I threw in the word had because I think that's what this means. It was supposed to boot to the Samsung 980. So probably the boot order in BIOS was showing the Sabrent above the Samsung and you concluded that it must have changed order. No, I don't think that's the case at all. I think your Samsung was originally configured in Windows as the default device. So even though BIOS sees the other drive first, it would know to boot to your Samsung 980. I tried at least six times, so I'm guessing the six times means you, sw you swapped the order in BIOS and it still failed to boot to the correct device. And again, I suspect that was because your Windows installation there was somehow damaged. And rather than repairing it, your BIOS went ahead and saw there was a bootable Windows image on another drive and it just went ahead and used that. Now, MS Config on that other device might have had the Sabrent NVMe as the default boot device. I'm not quite sure how that how that works, if they both can can conflict with each other about what is the default device. And in that case, it seems like BIOS should take the first one that's claiming to be the default boot device. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, another comment in here is uh, your USB device. <clears throat> You set that as a boot device and it didn't work until you plugged into the, the red port. So here's a, a little bit we talked about yesterday about USB 2.0 versus 3.x with a bootable USB device. Sometimes we find that some computers will only boot on the 2.0. In this case, it was the other way around. It was only working on the 3.x <laughs> device. And that might have been a characteristic of the thumb drive that you're using. I'm not sure about that. And it worked. Well, that implies you got booted through the thumb drive. That's not actually your Windows operating system. Afterward, there was two audio glitches. So it sounds some like some something in here. It sounds like you got your boot drive fixed, the one that you wanted to be the boot drive, which was the Samsung 980. And I'm suspecting somewhere in the mix of going through all of that that you got into a Windows repair mode and it repaired the correct drive and that got you uh, back into business. So then it started working great. I'm so nervous about going into BIOS anymore. I have no idea what my settings are anymore. So if you're inclined, I'd like you to peruse through BIOS and show me what may be any preferred settings or setups in BIOS. Now, I cannot connect remotely and see your BIOS screen. So here's some ideas. Is you could go into your BIOS and take cell phone pictures or use that F12 technique for doing screenshots from the BIOS screen if your BIOS supports that. And I don't, if somebody has the link for the instructions on how to do that, what did I do? Did I do a video on that? I don't remember. But you can take a screenshot and it, copy it to a thumb drive from in BIOS. But taking cell phone pictures is, is fine. That's a quick, easy way to do it. So go into your BIOS and take photos of any screens that you would like explanations on. There's lots of screens to go to in BIOS because every time you click on, on here's that BIOS on that Dell computer, 
Every time you click on one of these, there may be sub pages. There's just a whole lot of stuff. But if you send me pictures of the of the screens that you have in BIOS, then we will um, uh, talk through them and try to describe um, uh, what they do for you. Um, and particularly best if you ask on this screen, what does such and such mean? To tell us which one that you'd like an explanation of. Otherwise, we could be telling you lots of stuff you don't care about. So I think that's all for my response to Wade. I'll go take a look at chat and see if you guys have anything else to add to that before I move on to the next email. Because otherwise, if I go through all, all of the emails and then go to chat, I won't know what one you're responding to. Uh, Tim Tech, hello, Robert, hello, uh, salutations, denizens from the diurnal cascade, the radiant chronoscope gate, chronoscape beckons ushering forth another epic of electrified potentialities. Now, for those who are watching this video after the fact and you didn't have the benefit of seeing the trailer that played before this show, it, this is a since essentially a response to the trailer. Greg M says, excellent explanation of government contracts and consultant studies in general. Let's see, that's at 840. That's before the show started. Oh, that was the... the um, yeah, the government contractor. So I guess I got to go show what that. Oh, that was this one right here. Uh, and I'm not going to play that on the show because it um, may result in a in a in a copyright notice, and I don't want to do that on the live show. So if I duplicate that and then uh, pause that and then share this, let's see, did that get me to? No, that didn't get. That got me to. Oh, I need to go to history. Uh, once you have seen the trailer, if you go click on history, you should be able to find the actual video because these most of these most of my traders are unlisted videos. So if somebody who's watching this after the fact wants to see what that trader was, then you could come over here and get it from the chat room. But the chat room messages won't show up until about 24 hours after the live show ends. It's not quite that long, but Let's see, trader for today and put in the link for that. So that's how you can go see that for those of you who are watching the show after the fact. Uh, really interesting trailer. Hi all from Alice. I've seen that trailer before. Yeah, it's a rerun. Can't join. Need to finish quest from Dennis. Uh, Brian, I bought a wig for a dollar today. It was a small price to pay. <laughs> Turbo and Cavulator laugh from Jim. Selden Ball greetings all with the weather. Couple weather reports and John Williams ran Israel as a V-Manor. Speedy C, Jim. And last time on Windows Daily because I got, I got started like two minutes late. Nicholas Hooks. Oh, got tangled in the verbiage of the intabulator, right? Why was the kleptomaniac upset after everyone made fun of him? He couldn't take a joke. <laughs> Kleptomaniac steals things. He couldn't take the joke. Get it? I have to explain it because some of the people out there are dugs. Alice Turan reminded me of Homeland. I think you might need more stagehands to help you with your preparation from Lawn Dog. Yeah, that would be useful. Well, the problem is there's plenty of dugs around here to help with it. They just are lazy dugs. And it's all left up to me. And Israel, that's the general idea to Alice. William Dawson, hello. I assume these NVMe drives are GPT rather than MB MBR formatted. Yeah, is that, is that, and I'm still thinking that his boot problem was because of a damaged operating system, but um, that might be one of the subjects that he's interested in. Okay, so no other comments on that email. So then I'll come back here and bring up the next email to respond to. I love that I had three emails to respond to, except that this one is from me to me. I, I forwarded a message to myself from Amazon. No, I didn't forward it. I just flagged it for today. Amazon sends me mes this message. This is an outright lie, absolute outright lie from Amazon. Thank you so much for the warm approach you had throughout the duration of our contact and for allowing me to help you with your concern. That is the lie right there. 
because I did not have a warm approach. I was hot. I was mad. I was upset. Now, calling that a warm approach is a little misleading because warm approach sounds kind and considerate and tolerant. I was not tolerant. I was very, very upset. Now, I didn't start out upset. I started out quite, quite calm and OK. So I'm going to show you what this is about. Start describing the situation to them and ask, well, what is the what is the order number? What is your what was the last four digits of the card number? And I, I would give that to her and then she would ask me again, what's the last four digits of the credit card that this I already gave you that such and such. And then a couple minutes would go by, what's the last four digits of the card? And do the same thing with the last four or five digits of the, of the order number and they could never find it, but they didn't tell me they couldn't find it. She just kept asking me for those that same piece of information. She had a thick accent. I couldn't understand her. And the issue that this was over, I'm going to show this to you. And I mentioned it a little bit yesterday. Now, I believe I have the blur set up. Yeah, the blur preset is there. So this should come up. All right. I'm going to watch and make sure that, yep, the blur. My address, the shipping address is blurred there. I'm not going to scroll up and down on this. So this was uh, shipped up on the top, shipped April 4th, 2022. Quantity 2 USB extension cable. I can use my mouse to point to things here. Oops, if I use the right mouse. That was the mouse for the Dell computer. Now you should be seeing that mouse moving around. Checking over here. Yes, you're seeing it move. So quantity to USB-C extension cable. 1498. Multiply that by two. 2996. Collected tax. I do, I know that I can have them withhold tax. I'd rather pay the tax so that I don't have to pay as much when I when tax sales tax time comes around. Total 3246. Notice down here on April 4th, they charge my card ending 3120. They they charge it 3246. And then on June 21st, they came back and charged another 16.23 cents. What? Why? This condition exists on two invoices, both in the same time frame. Now, the way I discovered this is when I was reconciling my books for 2022, I don't reconcile every month. I'm not, I don't have a bookkeeper hired to do that. So I do it once a year, generally. I do extended tax filing, so it's coming close to my tax filing time for 2022. So this is my time now to be reconciling my records for 2022. That's why I'm so far behind on doing it. I'm not behind. I'm on time in my in my world, in the Dougiverse. So what happened is this showed up on my bank statement for 1623, and I went looking in my Amazon purchase records around June 21st, and I couldn't find anything for $16.23. So I went to my Amazon credit, or credit card account and pulled up statements online. Turns out they only show, they only keep available statements online for 12 months. So that's June 21st. We're in August right now. So that's more than 12 months ago. So I can't get that statement online so i had to order it they sent the they sent the statement to me and i find those uh charges on here for a usb c extension cable so then i go search in my amazon purchase records <coughs> for usb c extension cable and i find this one in april i open the invoice for it and i see this charge in june on that what why so then I go searching back and I find, well, what happened is I had returned one of these two cables. Well, why would that cause them to charge me more? The other invoice that I also had the same problem with was also the USB-C extension cable for the same price, a little different date, same exact circumstance. In fact, it's right up here. I can just click on this up here because the blur should be in the same location. Yes. So here's this other one. You, you barely saw me change. This one's April 7th. And you see here, April 7th, 1623. So I didn't buy two of them this time. 
But this one also, I returned it. So what do they do when they when you return something, right? They charge you again for it. What? I could not get them. They could not find the right invoice. And finally, I demanded to see a supervisor. And the girl said, please, will you give me another chance? And I gave her another chance. She went back and asked me for the same four last digits. I said, no, I want a supervisor. I got to the supervisor. I gave the supervisor the last four digits. She couldn't find it. And then she said, give me the full number. So I gave her the full number. She found it. At the end of the whole thing, when this is all over, I said, why couldn't you find it? And she says, well, it's because it's over a year old. I told the first girl this was over a year old. Why didn't she ask for the full number? Oh, I got so angry and upset. So then the supervisor says, you were credited for that in May. Have five to seven days. That's when we give the credit. And it's here in our records for May. I don't have the May statement. I have to go back and order the May statement. So now I have ordered the May and the April statement in June, maybe. I don't know. So I was really, I was just, I was not. Warm approach? No. This was mad, angry, Doug. Now, no foul language. But, oh, I was, I was yelling at them. I was yelling at them. Now, so at the end of all of that, when she showed the stuff in May, I figured, okay, it's probably all correct. I'm going to hang. I'm just, I, I, I told her I'm done with this. This has taken me so much time away from my, from my business, from my work. It's not worth it. And I just ended the call abruptly. Well, she did the further research and found that, yeah, they did give me the refund, but still these extra charges are not supposed to be there. So that's what she says. Yeah, the warm approach you had throughout the duration of our contact, absolute lie. <laughs> I've confirmed that we mistakenly charged you for your order, USB-C extension cable 10 foot, yada, yada, yada. I'm so sorry for about this error. How do they do that? How did they do that error? I don't get it. I've issued a refund of 3246 because they did that extra charge once on each of those two separate statements. So it's two times. I thought I was going to get four times back. Because I thought instead of crediting me, they charged me again. So I thought each of those invoices was, was going to get double that amount back. The refund will go through within three to five business days. Appear as a credit on your next statement. Once processed, you'll also be able to see the refund request here. Once processed. All right. We hope to see you again soon. <laughs> and not, I hope not. Not on a phone call. We'd appreciate your feedback. Please the buttons to vote about your experience. I don't do that. Even I, It's just not worth my time. They've already sucked too much of my time. If you don't, if you haven't flagged your records that you guys upset me, then that's on you. You shouldn't need me to give you any extra, tell you any extra that I'm unhappy about that. So... Now, what does Doug do when he's upset like that? That was going to trigger a headache for me. I absolutely knew that was going to trigger a migraine for me. You guys know I get that I have troubles with, with, with migraines. Please don't send me solutions for migraines. This has been a 30-year thing. I've been through. I, don't. Don't do that. Don't, don't go Google something and send me. No. Don't tell me about your Aunt Mary who, oh, sorry, I, didn't, I wasn't referring to Josh as Aunt Mary. Your Aunt Gertrude who has migraines and what works for her. I don't want to hear about it. If you do that stuff, I will stop telling you about my what goes on in my life. I'm just checking the redirect, see if I have anybody to redirect to today. Josh Kinder, Kerry Holzman's got a show, so I'll redirect to him. That fixes in. Let's go see if you guys are responding to that at all. Alice, I understand how you feel. Yeah. Oh, what did you, Doug, what did you do to get over that? <laughs> I had more adult beverages yesterday afternoon than I've had in a long time. And I got away without a headache. I got through it okay. And I think it's because I immediately, and that's something that, well, that's one of my treatments. When I feel a migraine coming on to immediately clear my calendar, stop working. I didn't do any other work the whole afternoon yesterday. I grabbed myself a beer and a chocolate chip cookie and I watched a comedy show. I wound up watching six episodes of it, 
which turned out to be the entire first season of a show that only had one season. And then after that was done, I got myself a glass with some ice in it, and poured a shot of rum in it, and then filled it with Pepsi. What I have with that? Oh, potato chips. Rum and Pepsi and potato chips. By the time was afternoon was over, I was I was in good spirits. Yeah, we as users spend more time documenting those screw up and spending 80 minutes on chat when five reps. And sometimes I don't even pursue it. I just let it go and money flows out. That's why I had to go through trying to find out why a $30 credit in my account disappeared. Somehow the image of Ned Flanders comes to mind. Sometimes you have to get mad at them since they simply reply boilerplate responses, have no critical thinking abilities. Doug, if they were really sorry, they would have something done about correcting the errors in the system. However, this occurred, I would work for a company that used constant improvement. When we had to say we're sorry about something for the company, we're supposed to bring it to the supervisors and higher ups to correct the problem because obviously something is, isn't right. And to improve on customer service and reduce problems, that was our, our policy. You know what would really have been, made me more happy is an explanation. If they could just tell me how this happened, and that they're going to report it to have it to have it fixed man that just would have that would have made my day you want to communicate something kind to me just volunteer an explanation how this happens or what you're going to do to try to prevent it from happening in the future and that's kind of what long dog was going towards amazon can be a pain in the neck sometime it's amazing how good amazon is and it's amazing how bad amazon is it's amazing that Amazon would throw multiple man hours of labor and the cost of printing and mailing out an old invoice over 3246 should have been automatic for Doug's volume of purchases. Greg, I feel your pain. Cookie, singular grammar, uh, singular form. It was a single cookie. It was a single chocolate chip cookie, and that, that was enough. All right, now I'm going to go on to the next email. <clears throat> now, I love filling up a whole show with questions that come either an email or in, or in chat. So <laughs> thank you, Amazon. If that wasn't really what I was after, but <clears throat> here we go from Tim Sal. I have a really good question. How can I upload a song that is not a video to YouTube, but use a thumbnail instead of a video? It's easy, very, very simple. All you need to do is use your video editing software, whatever video editing software you have, import a photograph for your thumbnail, import whatever you want for your thumbnail, then import the audio. And if it's, let's say you're playing the audio on your computer, just record a video using your video recording software. And it doesn't matter what you're showing on the screen. Just record it so that you're capturing the audio along with whatever image is on the screen. And then import that into your video editing software. Turn off the display of the video image that came in with that audio so that you're left just with that photo. And then stretch that photo out to fill the full length of the audio. So then you have a thumbnail displayed the entire time that the audio is playing. In this case, it was going to be an audio of a song. Oh, Tim, you know I display emails. If you don't want something displayed, don't include it in the email. I, I don't want to go back and edit this video, Tim, because we lose the chat room. Please, people, when you send me an email, do not include something that you don't want displayed. I will prevent your email address from displaying, but if you type something else in the email, I'm not going to catch that. All right. Ran Israel says, a single cookie, the horror. I don't see any other responses on that subject. Is Tim even in chat? I don't see Tim. All right. Tim, let me know if that causes a problem, and I'll go back and cut it out. Well, I guess, I, I, well, you know what? I, I show the chat room on screen. The only downside of people not 
being able to see the replay chat is they can't copy and paste a uh, like this video link. All right, I'll I'll ask Tim by text if I need if he wants needs me to blur that out. Okay, here's my email address. If you want to send me something for that a question that I can respond to during a Windows Daily, send it to that address without anything in the email that you don't want displayed during the show. And um, I don't reply to the emails, but I'll reply to them on the live show. So have a great day, everybody. And there's a redirect coming up for Carrie's show. And I'll catch you later. Goodbye.